The oppressive silence that shrouded our once lively home felt suffocating as I stood in the foyer, clutching the divorce papers in my trembling hands. Jeff's words echoed mercilessly in my mind. I've found someone else who's more fitting for this lifestyle. You couldn't even manage to give me a proper air. Take Claire and leave. For years, I'd been contorting myself into the perfect wife, only to be thrown away like yesterday's trash. The man I loved, the father of my child, had shattered my world with a few callous sentences, all for the sake of maintaining his precious image. Tears stung my eyes as I glanced down at Claire, her innocent face etched with confusion. In that moment, I knew I had to be strong for her sake, no matter how deeply Jeff's betrayal cut. Brushing away the tears, I mustered a reassuring smile and took her tiny hand in mine. "'Don't worry, sweetie,' I whispered, my voice trembling slightly. "'Mommy's gonna make sure we're okay.' With a deep breath, I turned my back on the life I had known and walked out the door, each step fueling the flames of determination within me. Jeff thought he could discard me like an old rag, but he had no idea just how resilient I could be. As I stepped into the crisp autumn air, a newfound sense of purpose ignited inside me. If he wanted to play this game, I would show him that I was no longer the meek, obedient wife he had grown accustomed to. This was just the beginning, and by the time I was through, Jeff would regret ever underestimating the woman he had sworn to cherish. I would burn his perfect world to the ground, and he would have no one to blame but himself. As I settled into the familiar comfort of my childhood bedroom at my parents' house, a rush of memories flooded my mind. The walls that had once sheltered my youthful dreams now witnessed the crumbling remnants of the life I had built with Jeff. In those first few days, I found solace in embracing Claire, her innocent laughter momentarily drowning out the echoes of Jeff's hurtful words. Yet even in those tender moments, I couldn't escape the vivid recollections of the emotional torment that had plagued our marriage. Jeff's manipulation had been subtle at first. Disguised as concern for my well-being, you need to lose that baby weight, darling, he'd say, his voice dripping with mock affection. We can't have you embarrassing the family. Slowly, his comments grew more pointed, chipping away at my self-worth. You're lucky I married you, considering your lackluster cooking skills, he'd sneer, pushing his plate away in disdain. But it wasn't until I discovered the truth about his affair that the full extent of Jeff's depravity became clear. She's everything you're not, Caitlin, he had sneered, his eyes cold and unapologetic, young, beautiful, and capable of giving me the air I deserve. Those words ignited a fire within me, one that burned brighter with each passing day. As I gazed at Claire's innocent face, I vowed to protect her from ever enduring the same emotional torture I had suffered. Jeff had foolishly underestimated my resilience, assuming I would crumble and fade into obscurity. Little did he know, I was just getting started. With the unwavering support of my family, I would dismantle his carefully constructed facade, exposing the true monster lurking beneath. He thought he could discard me like a broken toy, but I would make him pay for every tear, every ounce of self-doubt he had inflicted upon me. This was no longer about salvaging our marriage. It was about retribution, pure and simple. And when the dust settled, Jeff would realize that the meek, compliant wife he had taken for granted was gone forever, replaced by a woman who would stop at nothing to exact her revenge. In the days that followed, a cold determination settled over me, hardening my resolve like steel. Jeff's callous words and actions had lit a fire within me, one that couldn't be extinguished until I had my retribution. As I lay awake at night, listening to Claire's gentle breathing beside me, a plan began to take shape. I would play along, pretending to be the meek, defeated wife Jeff expected. All the while, I would be gathering ammunition, exposing every last one of his secrets until his perfect world came crumbling down around him. The next time Jeff demanded to see Claire, I didn't put up a fight. Instead, I forced a smile and agreed, knowing full well that this would be the last time he held any power over us. Of course, dear, I said, my voice sickly sweet. I wouldn't dream of keeping her from you. The smug satisfaction on his face nearly made me sick, but I held my tongue. He thought he had won, that I was beaten down and broken. Little did he know, this was just the beginning. Over the following weeks, I played the part of the dutiful ex-wife, 
all while enlisting the help of my brother, Evan. As a skilled attorney, he knew exactly how to gather the evidence we needed to bring Jeff's house of cards tumbling down. Are you sure about this, Caitlin? he asked, concern etched across his features. Once we start down this path, there's no turning back. I met his gaze, my eyes blazing with determination. He made his choice when he decided to throw us away like garbage. Now it's time for him to face the consequences. With Evan's guidance, I began documenting every instance of Jeff's emotional abuse, every financial indiscretion, and every sordid detail of his affair. Each piece of evidence felt like a victory, a step closer to the reckoning he deserved. And as the walls closed in around Jeff's perfect life, I couldn't help but smile. He had spent years breaking me down, convincing me that I was worthless. But in the end, it would be his own arrogance and cruelty that proved to be his undoing. All right, we'll leave, I told him, my voice laced with false resignation. But don't think you'll be rid of us that easily. The confusion on his face was priceless, a taste of the humiliation yet to come. Jeff had no idea what he had awoken within me, but he would soon learn that hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. With a renewed sense of purpose, I reached out to my best friend, Naomi. Her warm embrace and reassuring words provided a much-needed respite from the turmoil swirling within me. "'You know I'm here for you, no matter what,' she said, her eyes filled with concern. "'But are you sure about going down this path? Revenge can consume a person.' I nodded, my jaw set with determination. Jeff brought this upon himself. He thought he could discard me like trash and face no consequences. Well, he's about to learn just how wrong he was. Naomi sighed but didn't argue further. She knew me better than anyone, and deep down, she understood that this was something I needed to do for my own peace of mind. With Naomi's unwavering support, I felt emboldened to take the next step. I reached out to my brother, Evan, knowing his legal expertise would be invaluable in my quest for retribution. Evan's expression was grim, as he listened to the details of Jeff's betrayal, his jaw clenching with barely contained rage. That son of a bitch, he muttered, shaking his head. Don't worry, sis, we're going to bury him. Over the next few weeks, Evan became my closest ally, guiding me through the intricate web of legal maneuvers required to dismantle Jeff's carefully constructed facade. Together, we meticulously documented every instance of emotional abuse, every financial indiscretion, and every sordid detail of his affair. He's always been so smug, thinking his money and status would protect him, Evan said, his voice laced with disdain. Well, let's see how he likes it when his precious reputation is in tatters. With each piece of evidence we gathered, I could feel the weight of Jeff's oppression lifting from my shoulders. No longer was I the meek, downtrodden wife he had taken for granted. I was a force to be reckoned with, and he would soon learn the true cost of his betrayal. Whenever doubt crept in, threatening to derail my resolve, I need only look at Claire's innocent face to find my strength again. She deserved a better life, free from the toxicity that had plagued our family for far too long. And as the walls closed in around Jeff's perfect world, I couldn't help but feel a sense of twisted satisfaction. He had underestimated me, believing I would simply slink away in defeat. Little did he know, I was just getting started. The day I officially moved out of the house I had once called home was bittersweet. As I packed up the last of our belongings, I couldn't help but feel a sense of relief, as if a weight had been lifted from my shoulders. Jeff, ever the arrogant bastard, had the audacity to show up and oversee our departure. I trust you'll be out of my life for good this time he sneered, his eyes narrowed with disdain. I forced a smile, biting back the torrent of anger that threatened to spill forth. Don't worry, Jeff, you'll get your wish. Just watch, though. You think you've won because you've replaced me, but you've underestimated my strength. His mocking laughter echoed in my ears as I loaded the last box into the car, but I didn't care. Let him revel in his false sense of victory for now. Soon enough, he would realize just how wrong he had been. As we pulled away, Claire pressed her face against the window, watching our old life disappear in the rearview mirror. Don't be sad, Mommy, she said, her voice small but reassuring. We're going to be okay. In that moment, my heart swelled with love for this incredible little girl who had endured so much in her short life. 
She was my strength, my reason for persevering, and I vowed to give her the life she deserved, one free from the toxicity that had plagued our family for far too long. Over the following weeks, as we settled into my childhood home, a profound shift took place within me. Gone was the insecure, downtrodden woman I had been, replaced by a fierce determination to protect my daughter and exact my revenge on the man who had betrayed us. Meanwhile, Jeff seemed to be living out his fantasies, blissfully unaware of the storm brewing on the horizon. He flaunted his new trophy girlfriend, parading her around like a prize to be admired, as if she were somehow superior to me. Little did he know that very same woman would soon become a catalyst in his downfall. Because as the walls closed in around Jeff's perfect world, not even his new plaything would be spared from the fallout. And through it all, I remained steadfast, fueled by the knowledge that everything he had taken for granted, his wealth, his status, his false sense of superiority, would all be ripped away, leaving him with nothing but the consequences of his own actions. Just wait, Jeff, I whispered my voice laced with determination. You may think you've won for now, but you have no idea what's coming. The first domino fell into place sooner than I had anticipated. During one of our late-night strategy sessions, Evan's eyes grew wide as he pored over the financial records we had obtained. Son of a bitch, he muttered, shaking his head in disbelief. Caitlin, you need to see this. As I leaned closer, the evidence was undeniable— Jeff had been systematically embezzling funds from the company for years, siphoning off money to fund his lavish lifestyle and keep his mistress in the lap of luxury. A twisted sense of satisfaction washed over me. For so long, Jeff had viewed me as nothing more than a burden, a financial drain on his precious resources. Little did he know it was his own greed and depravity that would be his undoing. Without a second thought, I shared the incriminating evidence with a trusted journalist— knowing the story would spread like wildfire. And sure enough, within days, the scandal erupted, sending shockwaves through Jeff's carefully curated social circles. The look on his face when the first article broke was priceless, a mixture of shock, outrage, and sheer panic. For once, the ever-composed Jeff Marshall was at a loss for words, his perfectly crafted facade crumbling around him. "'What have you done?' he demanded, his voice trembling with barely contained rage as he confronted me. Do you have any idea what this will do to my reputation? I met his gaze, unflinching. You brought this upon yourself, Jeff. You thought you could get away with everything, but your secrets are about to destroy you from the inside out. As the days ticked by, the fallout intensified. Jeff's business partners turned their backs on him, his social standing evaporated, and his mistress, the very woman he had chosen over me, abandoned him without a second thought. "'You're nothing but a liar and a cheat,' she spat, her voice dripping with disgust as she packed her bags. "'I want nothing more to do with you.' And through it all, I couldn't help but feel a sense of twisted satisfaction. For too long, Jeff had held all the power, using his wealth and status as a cudgel to keep me in line. But now the tables had turned, and he was powerless to stop the avalanche of consequences he had brought upon himself. "'You see, Jeff?' I whispered, my voice laced with triumph. Everything you've built, everything you've taken for granted, it's all crumbling around you, and you have no one to blame but yourself. As Jeff's world crumbled around him, a part of me couldn't help but revel in his misery. For years he had made me feel small, insignificant, constantly questioning my self-worth. But now the tables had turned, and he was the one grasping at straws, desperately trying to salvage the remnants of his once-perfect life. With each passing day, the news grew grimmer for Jeff. His once-thriving business was in shambles, his former colleagues and friends turning their backs on him in droves. Even his beloved mistress, Angela, had fled the scene, unwilling to be tainted by his rapidly deteriorating reputation. "'Please, Angela,' he had begged, his voice hoarse with desperation. "'Don't leave me like this.' But his pleas fell on deaf ears. Angela had made her choice— and Jeff was left to wallow in the consequences of his own actions, alone and disgraced. As for me, I watched the spectacle unfold with a sense of grim satisfaction. This was the moment I had been waiting for, the chance to strike while Jeff was at his most vulnerable, to claim the one thing he held most dear, our daughter, Claire. With Evan's guidance, I navigated the legal system with surgical precision, 
building an airtight case against Jeff's fitness as a parent. His emotional abuse, financial misdeeds, and infidelity painted a damning portrait as leaving him with little recourse to fight my demands for full custody. The look on his face as he sat across from me in the courtroom was one I would never forget. Gone was the arrogant, self-assured man who had once belittled me at, at every turn. In his place was a broken, pathetic shell of a human being, utterly powerless to stop the avalanche of consequences he had brought upon himself. "'You can't do this,' he pleaded, his voice trembling with desperation. "'Claire is my daughter, too.' But his words fell on deaf ears. The judge had seen through his facade, recognizing him for the toxic, manipulative individual he truly was. "'Mr. Marshall,' the judge said, his tone stern and unwavering, "'based on the overwhelming evidence presented, it is clear that you are unfit to maintain custody of your child. Full custodial rights are hereby granted to Mrs. Marshall.' As the gavel came down, sealing Jeff's fate, I couldn't help but feel a sense of triumph. He had given up everything—his wealth, his status, his mistress—all for nothing. Leaning in close, I allowed myself a small, vindictive smile. You gave up everything for nothing, Jeff. Now it's all falling apart, just like you deserve. The weight that had been pressing down on my shoulders for so long finally lifted as I settled into my new life with Claire. Gone was the suffocating sense of dread and despair that had plagued me during my marriage to Jeff. In its place was a newfound sense of freedom, a chance to start anew without the toxic presence of the man who had once made me question my worth. As I embarked on my new career path, finally pursuing the dreams I had put on hold for far too long, I found solace in the simple joys of motherhood. Claire's infectious laughter and boundless curiosity were a constant reminder of the strength that had carried me through my darkest days. Meanwhile, Jeff's descent into obscurity was as swift as it was brutal. The once powerful CEO was reduced to a mere shadow of his former self, scraping by odd jobs and living a life of quiet desperation. His former social circles had long since abandoned him, leaving him to wallow in the consequences of his own actions. Whenever I caught glimpses of him around town, disheveled and haunted, a part of me felt a twisted sense of satisfaction. This was the man who had once made me feel small and insignificant, the one who had callously discarded me like yesterday's trash. And now, he was the one left to pick up the pieces of a life in ruins. But as time passed, the bitterness began to fade, replaced by a newfound sense of empowerment and purpose. I had survived Jeff's emotional torture— emerged from the ashes of our toxic marriage stronger and more resilient than ever before. And as I looked towards the future, I couldn't help but feel a sense of optimism, for myself and for the incredible young woman Claire was blossoming into. Gone were the shadows of our past, replaced by the promise of endless possibilities. On the rare occasions when Jeff tried to reach out, pleading for a chance to reconnect with his daughter, I rebuffed him without hesitation. That chapter of our lives was over, and I had no intention of allowing his toxicity to seep back in and taint the hard-won peace we had found. Despite everything, I've found strength within, I told Claire one night as we sat together on the porch, watching the sunset. My focus now is our future, brighter than ever, without the shadows of the past. And as she snuggled closer, her small hand finding mine, I knew that no matter what challenges lay ahead, we would face them together a united front, unbreakable and unstoppable.